Welcome to my channel, I am GDP, and oh boy does Forces shake up the meta. Before we get started, I would appreciate if you guys hit that like and subscribe button for the YouTube algorithm. Today I'm going to be talking about Forces, the new hero that came out on Christmas. Um, as I said, this hero shook up the meta in quite, in quite a drastic way, I would say. Um, pretty much the current meta was dominated by Rogan feed teams, and this hero is pretty much DH games counter to that. But before we get into talking about the meta, let's go ahead and talk about his mechanics and why he is countering the current meta. So for the first mechanic here, pretty much the biggest one is his active. When he does his active, he puts out this curse and on application, it removes a buff and then has three layers of Curse of Decay and when each of those layers is triggered, it deals a large amount of damage uh, to the enemy hero. And this damage is considered normal damage. It can be reduced by uh, damage reduction, armor, uh, AMB, crown, all DR, uh, basically anything you can think of that reduces damage, it does work on this. Um, it d Dodge does work on the curse where uh, if you dodge the application or the active, you don't get any uh, curse applications on you. So carry dodge does work, SFX does work, Drake dodge does work. Um, and then also you get faction advantage within your own team on the damage of that curse. So for example, if uh, Ignis is on your team and gives a... Uh, damage reduction buff onto a Rogan. Doing so will actually uh, give a faction advantage to that damage to Rogan. So Rogan will take more damage than a normal hero because Ignis has faction advantage on Rogan from the curse. So it's like Ignis is damaging your hero, not Forces is damaging your hero. Uh, so that is interesting to see there. Um, but the big, big, big thing about this damage, it is unbending will ignoring damage. Just like Amon Ra's curse, uh, it does ignore unbending will. Uh, but there is a difference how this one is normal damage, while Amon Ra is just uh, straight up curse damage. You can't, you can't reduce it. DR doesn't work. Uh, but this one, it does. Um, for the attribute buff, when the active does go out, it removes a complete layer of that buff. So say Rogan, uh, Rogan gives a speed and a crit damage buff at the start of the round. Um, it's going to remove one of those uh, speed buffs or the uh, crit damage buff off right away. I do believe it goes off in the order in some it's some sort of order like the, the debuffs do have some sort of slot order because I did notice that it goes from the uh, farthest right buff first into the left side. Um, so it will remove the farthest right buff and then go work to the left. Um, so it will remove a complete layer. So if it has eight stacks, it will remove all eight stacks. Um, but the the curse individual layers will only remove one layer of buffs. In this clip here that I'm showing you, we have Rogan who has two uh, layers of speed buffs on him and also two layers of crit damage buff on him. Uh, Forces is about to active onto Rogan and this has a chance to remove a stack or not a stack, an entire buff. So remove both of the layers and then also apply the curse or three layers of the curse. So let's go ahead and look at this. I do actually, I think it'll be two layers of the curse because this is a six star, but as you can see, it does remove the entire buff of the crit damage. And then when the next round comes up, these, he is supposed to get two 
layers of attack and also two layers of crit. But since Forces had two layers of curse on him, he only got one layer of attack and one layer of crit and took damage for, uh, I guess, receiving those buffs and having them removed. Um, so the curse doesn't remove the entire buff. It removes individual layers, but the actual application of the curse does remove the entire buff. So that is one interesting thing that I did notice. Um, some other things here is, is the curse is triggered on pretty much anything that changes your stat sheet, um, like damage reduction, control immunity, uh, attack, speed, energy, anything that normally could be in gear basically. So we do have energy artifacts. We do have something that can give us plus energy. Hence, when you have a demon bell that is upgraded and it does go off, it will damage your team and proc a curse stack because that is giving plus energy. So this does mean that Ignis, energy feed on Ignis, does proc the curse. Um, so anything in the future, if it gives energy, it is going to proc curses. Uh, pet buffs, they do in fact count as a buff and will proc curse and get removed. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're running a deer, a deer does give an attack buff and a armor buff. So that does count as two triggers on the curse. Um, same with dragon, it's giving a 40% or what, not 40%, a 70% holy damage buff. So that will count. Uh, so pet buffs do count for that. Obviously the, uh, the Sphinx uh, debuff that it goes to enemies isn't going to count. But the Sphinx uh, art attack buff on the active does count. Um, so that is another thing that I notice is that pet buffs were count as a curse. It gained energy counts as a curse. And uh, that is basically kind of why also the Rogan feed teams is getting checked is because these demon bells are starting to hurt your own team. One other thing I would like to talk about before we continue on is um, yesterday I did notice a bug in his dark coil. This has been fixed. Uh, the bug was this reduce 30% uh, of all damage dealt wasn't getting applied to the enemy and the enemy's damage wasn't getting any lower. That has since been fixed. I think it was a server side issue, but this now fully works as intended. And also as a side note, this all damage dealt does stack with Flora's all damage dealt reduction. So um, if you do build some sort of sustain team with Foe and Flora, it would work. Now let's talk about his issues because I have talked about how great he is, how he has shifted the meta. Um, not really why he has shifted the meta yet, but let's talk about his issues real quick. Uh, his biggest issue is his squishiness. Um, he is so squishy that sometimes if you don't have the right support for him in your team or it's the right amount of imprints against the, the team that you're going against for your foe to live, it's possible he dies before he gets an active off and then becomes useless and doesn't do anything. Um, that is one thing about him is the teams that can counter foe do so well just because he's so squishy and he doesn't he can't do anything about that and then he becomes a liability on a, on your team even though he dishes out a massive amount of damage if he's not able to trigger that curse he does actually kind of become a liability because he is very squishy now that we have talked about the mechanics of foe and pretty much broken down how he works let's talk about where he sits in the meta but while we do that, let's go ahead and roll some clips of PvP here so you guys can see them in action and go ahead and roll some music. So, should you be scrolling or should you not be scrolling is probably what a lot of you are asking yourselves and, want, and probably why you're watching this video is to figure out if you should scroll for this hero. 
I think that answer kind of depends on how much resources you have and how concentrated you are in PvP and if you want fast results right away. If you want to stay highly relevant in the endgame meta, you're going to have to build him. He's going to be a nice tool in your kit that you can bring out to start a, as I said, as I like to say, check the meta. If something gets out of control with Rogans or Feeds, you can put Forces in to kind of check that and shut that down. Now, that does mean that other teams can come in and beat you because you're, you're, you're checking the Rogan meta, now they can check you. So it becomes kind of a rock, paper, scissors there, but that's pretty much what the end game is right now. Now in the lower tiers, this hero is actually very strong, especially if you're running against teams that have buffs, uh, but he is going to be very strong even for uh, mid to late game players that are focused once again heavily in PvP. Uh, for those players that are not focused so heavily in PvP and don't care about being top of the end, do you need this hero? The answer to that question is maybe. It is possible that sometime in the future this hero is able to continue checking the meta and that there are future heroes that provide buffs that he can trigger all this stuff on and maybe there will be something else that will help him sustain and live a bit longer where he can stay alive longer and have that last passive come more into effect than what it is right now. But that is in the future and right now he is more of used kind of a high end top tier niche hero. So this means he is not absolutely needed. You can actually let other players evolve the meta while you sit back, probably lose a little more than, uh, probably lose a little bit, yes, but if you sit it out, you could probably wait until Chinese New Year's and maybe this hero will be evolved in that new meta, maybe he won't, we'll see. But right now he is basically a S tier niche hero. Um, he's going to be really, really good against those current right now meta teams. But once the meta evolves, he might not be so great because there might not be so many buffs to come out because a way to kind of hard counter him is to have less buffs on your team. Um, so he is, I think, kind of, I don't know about first of its kind, but definitely one of its few where, where we have had a niche hero who's actually kind of considered S tier because of the impact he has on the meta. I just, I can't say he's not S tier right now. Um, the way S tier is, is if you have a hero that can impact a meta like this, he they belong in S tier because they are, he's there to check it, as I said. If something gets out of control, he can be like, hey, I'm here, I exist, I can shut this down. Um, so if you have 3000 plus scrolls, 100%, I do think you should be scrolling. Um, if you have, say, 2,000 scrolls, it's a little bit more iffy. Um, I think you should be probably doing enough scrolls where you can ensure that you'll probably have 2,000 scrolls by Chinese New Year's and get a little bit of copies now and then build him when chests come out later. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I've kind of been working all night on breaking down his mechanics, getting the footage that I need, formulating my own opinion on him on where he's going to fit in the meta where he's possibly going to be good where he's going to be bad what his role is and all that so once again s tier top tier niche hero with an asterisk so top tier but just keep in mind that he is sometimes a liability if you are running against teams that don't bring buffs. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and enjoy these PvP clips. Catch you guys in the next one.